Liam Lawson has been brought up to the talks of potentially having a full-time F1 seat after Helmut Marko has dropped a bombshell about Ricardo's future. And it does seem like we're going to see a massive shake-up in the Drivers' Championship sooner rather than later. With this in mind, and with the latest ruffle between Ricardo and Sonoda, could Marco pull some strings in order to replace the Aussie with Lawson? And if so, how does that translate to the ultimate goal of the Racing Bulls drivers, the second seat in Red Bull? It's no secret that Liam Lawson is one very talented driver and he's shown that in the five race stint that he had with Alpha Tauri last year. However, it wasn't enough for him to receive a full-time contract with the team. Talking on Drive to Survive, he said that it was quite frustrating to beat the guy who was with the team for multiple years and still not be signed ahead of him. But Horner himself said that Red Bull has some huge plans for Lawson and now it seems like Marco intended tends to implement these plans sooner rather than later, but on at the expense of Christian Horner's favourite driver, Ricardo. After dropping a bombshell on Ricardo's performance in the team, something we'll discuss later in this video, Marco went on to praise the performance that Liam Lawson has put in the sport, and not only that, but he hinted about a potential future of him as a Racing Bulls driver amid the huge struggle the team has found in the first two races of the season. Talking about this, Marco went on to say, Behrman, but also our Liam Lawson or Pedro Acosta in MotoGP show what truly exceptional talents are. Sure, today the boys are well prepared when they move up, but only if someone is really good can they achieve such achievements right from the start, like Lawson did. As of now, the situation is quite complicated because unfortunately you can't put three drivers in one team. However, you can make some tough decisions that while it might seem extremely hard in the short term, could bring a lot of fruit for the foreseeable future. On top of that, Marco's intra-team beef with Horner could very well benefit Lawson due to the fact that the veteran Austrian is scouting young talent for the Austrian team and his skills could come in handy one more time if Lawson receives a full-time racing seat in the Racing Bulls. This has been further propagated by the fact that Marco warned Ricardo that he needs to do something much more than he's doing right now if he's to be considered as a proper replacement for Perez or let alone a stable driver for the racing bulls. As of now, the Aussie has had quite some issue to adapt to the car and contrary to him, Tsunoda brought his car to Q3 in Jeddah, which is a huge statement when it comes to who's the better driver after the first two venues in the 2024 calendar. When talking more about this and inadvertently putting a lot of pressure on Ricardo and opening up the door for Lawson, Marco went on to say, there is a lot at stake this season for both Yuki and Daniel. Yuki's qualifying performance is very good and Ricardo has to come up with something soon. Where there's work, at least Tsunoda is very good in qualifying. Then they are at the top of the world championship points in the first stint only to fall further and further behind afterwards. They cannot maintain the speed in the long term. Whether they are putting too much strain on the tyres or there are other reasons is what we need to find out. However, a similar pattern from 2021 and 2022 is appearing in Ricardo's case yet again, as the Aussie has yet again expressed issues with the car while his teammate doesn't seem to have any of these issues at all. That happened while he was with McLaren and although he stands as the last full race winner in Monza in 2021, it's safe to say that this was the sole highlight of his depressing career with the Woking base squad. Many believed that Ricardo would find it hard to recover and find his form again and after the 2023 rise in performance, especially at the Mexican GP, we were convinced otherwise but still the start of the 2024 season might show otherwise and the Aussie knows that his seat is in danger. The bad news for him is that Red Bull has no shortage of options. 
They have a full array of drivers to choose from, but obviously the top pick would be Liam Lawson. After all, this is the driver who managed to beat Tsunoda on a regular basis during the time being teammates. And one couldn't help but wonder, is he the right driver to pair with Yuki from 2025 onwards? Ricardo's contract is expiring, so is Perez, and the Aussies' mission to retire with the Austrian senior squad is slowly but surely dying due to the fact that Perez is performing exactly how he should in order to keep the seat in Red Bull, be the second fastest driver on the grid in the same car as Verstappen. Yuki Tsunoda said it the best, the faster driver from his team goes to Red Bull, while the slower one faces the harsh environment that Red Bull provides for anyone who dares to step in this circle, which is either being kicked out of the team and get his F1 career ruined, or ultimately having to deal with a lot of pressure from their other teammates who would have the exact same goal as them, push for a Red Bull seat. Nonetheless, if Lawson is brought to racing balls, it does translate as bad news for Sonoda as well, who would be put under the same pressure like last year when Lawson replaced Ricardo and the Japanese driver didn't really show that he's ready for a challenge of that magnitude. To worsen things, Sonoda is tied with Honda, meaning that once they start the collaboration from 2026 onwards with Aston Martin, the situation could change drastically in the driver's market for Red Bull. And in order for the drivers to prove they're worth remaining in Red Bulls for the foreseeable future, they need to outperform the wheels of the car and put it exactly where they planned before the season started in the top midfield. But Ricardo himself acknowledges that there is an issue with the car, one that he believes they would be able to fix in Melbourne. And if they don't, and he still finds himself behind Tsunoda, it's safe to assume that his F1 career will be put under jeopardy. When talking about the performance of the VC ARB01, the car that was supposed to fight in the top midfield and has scored zero points as of now, Ricardo went on to say, when it comes to producing efficiency and everything, just a few things didn't quite add up. In Bahrain, I knew that it was more of my fault, but in Jeddah's qualifying, when it kind of plateaus and the others kept improving, it's also a bit of a sign. I could feel that that was the limit of the car. We did find some things afterwards, but then you've got Park Ferme, and even if we didn't have it, it's probably nothing we can fix in 24 hours. So I'm sure a few things would go back to the factory and come back with a fresh car in Melbourne. Again, it's worth mentioning that Tsunoda didn't report on these issues and the sole one from his side is that he was instructed to let Ricardo pass due to the Aussie being on fresher tyres in Bahrain and he still failed to do what he was instructed to do, pass the Haas car in front of him. The fact that this battle was outside of the points for P12 further goes to show that the team is not in the place they want to be and maybe they would push for a change of scenery, which could see Ricardo out of the team due to his marketing values not being good enough to keep the team on the high horse and attracting sponsors left, right and centre. Fighting in the top midfield, as Peter Bayer promised, is poised to do that. With this in mind, do you think that Ricardo's future in F1, more precisely in Red Bull, is over? And if so, do you think that Lawson is the right replacement for the Aussie driver? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.